Do you know why airplane wings are swept backwards? Let me show you. So if we take a 2D airfoil and we fly subsonic, so Mach is lower than one, we will not have any problems. But if we reach a point where the flow around the wing touches Mach 1, we will have a shockwave. In this case, if we fly transonic, so that means that the flow here is lower than Mach 1, since the wing accelerate the flow, we will have a point around here where we will end up with a shockwave. But we don't want that, right? In fact, if we have a shockwave, we will have an increase in the amount of drag that the plane is feeling, and we will also have problem with the stability of the plane itself. So we gotta know how to control the shockwave. So let's introduce the critical Mach number, which is the ratio between the velocity and the speed of sound. This number is the lowest number at which we will see some kind of shockwaves forming around the wing. So in commercial flights, what we want is to have this number as high as possible to delay the formation of shockwaves. If we look at a commercial airplane, we will have the wing that is backwards and the angle between the horizon and the wing leading edge is the sweep angle, of course. Now we can divide the velocity, so Mach infinity, the velocity of the flow before reaching the wing in two components. Parallel Mach and 2D Mach. The parallel component does not affect lift and drag. Remember that. The only thing that affects these two forces is the 2D Mach. In fact, we have 2D Mach, which is infinity Mach times the cosine of the sweep angle. So if we fly at Mach infinity equals to 0.7 and we have no sweep, we could end up in a situation like this. So having a shockwave somewhere here, but we don't want that. So let's introduce 30 degrees sweep angle. So now the 2D Mach is going to be 0.61. So that means that if we had an angle in the wing, we can lower the amount of velocity that we have on top of the wing. So in other words, we are delaying the formation of the shockwave.